Hi, I'm Whitney from the food blog WhitneyBond.com and today we're making a classic dish, the Beef Wellington. It is a showstopper at any meal, perfect for the holiday season and beyond. So how we're going to start the recipe is by seasoning the beef tenderloin and then searing it in a skillet. So I'll go ahead and turn my heat on the stove and we want to get it very hot because we just want to sear the outside of the meat quickly. So I'm going to add some olive oil to the skillet and then I'm going to season the meat on all sides with a little bit of salt and pepper. Once the skillet and the oil is hot, we're going to go ahead and add our beef tenderloin and sear it on all sides. Make sure to sear all sides, including the top and bottom, for one to two minutes so that everything is seared. Once the meat is seared, remove it from the skillet, turn the heat off, and let it cool. And you can transfer it to the refrigerator to let it cool a little faster, and then we're going to rub it down with some Dijon mustard. Once the beef tenderloin is cool enough to handle, go ahead and brush it with Dijon mustard on all sides. You'll use about two tablespoons of Dijon mustard to coat the outside of the beef. And then we're gonna place it back in the fridge again to cool um, while we make our mushroom mixture. All right, our beef is all covered in mustard and going back into the fridge. So now we're going to make the mushroom mixture, which is also known as duxel in French. And this is going to go around the beef tenderloin in the Wellington. So we're going to start with one and a half pounds of chopped mushrooms. And I actually don't have a big enough food processor to do all of this in one batch. So we're going to do it in two batches. And we're going to combine the mushrooms with shallots and garlic and thyme. So we'll add the roughly chopped shallots, um, roughly chopped garlic cloves, and fresh thyme leaves. And then we're gonna go ahead and give this a pulse in the food processor. You want to stop when the mixture is finely chopped, but not mush. So it should look something like this. And then we're going to add butter to a large skillet on the stove. And we're gonna cook this down. So medium high heat, we're gonna add the butter and let it melt. So now that we have all of our duxel uh, mixture prepared and our butter has melted in the skillet, we're gonna go ahead and add it. And we're gonna let this cook down for about 25 minutes because you want to cook all of the moisture out. This is one of the keys to a successful beef wellington is making sure that there's no extra liquid that would cook inside and make the puff pastry soggy. So we wanna make sure we cook this down for plenty of time and cook all of the water out. Now, while the um, Dukeso mixture is cooking down. We're gonna season it with salt and pepper and then just let it simmer for 25 minutes. Once you see that there is no more liquid remaining in the Dukeso, you can remove it from the stove, turn off the heat, and then you'll wanna go ahead and transfer it to the refrigerator while, where you're going to let it cool. 
before adding it to the Wellington. So now that we've let our Duke salad chill, we are going to start putting the beef Wellington together. So we're gonna need 12 slices of prosciutto and we're gonna lay these out. I've already laid out two pieces of plastic wrap. And so we're gonna overlap these slightly. And then our Duke cell mixture will go on top and then we will roll the beef tenderloin up in the prosciutto and Duke cell mixture. And then we're gonna let it chill in the refrigerator. So we wanna slightly overlap the prosciutto. So we'll do six slices down here and then um, six slices on top. So now we're going to spread the Duke Sal mixture right on top of the prosciutto in a nice even layer. This really adds that great umami flavor to the beef wellington and it's so delicious. If you've never made a beef wellington and you're watching this video, I highly encourage you to go ahead and give it a try. It does take a lot of steps, but it really isn't that hard. It's actually pretty easy, just a little bit of downtime uh, in between while you're letting the different parts of the recipe either chill in the fridge or cook down. Um, but it's definitely something that anybody can make at home. And I guarantee wherever you serve this dish for a holiday or a special occasion or just a Friday night at home, um, everyone that tries it is going to be impressed with how delicious the different layers of flavor are in a beef wellington. So once we've got a nice even layer of our Duke cell, we are going to go ahead and put our beef wellington at the end. Now the beef wellington has been chilled in the fridge and coated in mustard. And now we're going to use the um, plastic wrap to help us roll it up. So you'll want to Pull the plastic wrap back as you roll because you don't want to get it stuck down in the beef wellington. You're just kind of using it as a tool to help you roll it up nice and tight. That's another key to the success of beef wellington is getting all the ingredients tightly rolled up so that you have a beautiful presentation at the end. So you wanna go ahead and tuck the prosciutto under as you're wrapping it up. And then use your plastic wrap to help you continue rolling it. And then if any of the Duke Sal falls out, just go ahead and tuck that in and then tuck over the sides of the prosciutto. All right, it is looking beautiful. And now we're gonna use this plastic wrap to wrap it up tightly and place it back in the fridge to chill for 10 minutes before we wrap it in the puff pastry. Already a beauty. And into the fridge we go. All right, now that we have chilled the prosciutto wrapped uh, beef tenderloin for about 10 minutes. We're going to roll out our puff pastry dough. If you have two sheets that you're working with, just slightly overlap them in the middle. You basically want to make a large rectangle, just slightly bigger, um, wider than the uh, bacon or the prosciutto wrap tenderloin that we've made over here, so that you can roll it up and it will cover it completely. So always be sure to defrost your puff pastry. Um, when you start this recipe, you can just set it out on the counter and it will take about 45 minutes usually, 30 minutes maybe, depending on how warm it is in your kitchen, um, to defrost out of the packaging. We are going to place 
the beef tenderloin at the bottom and we're going to add an egg wash around the other three edges. All right, so I'm just gonna press where the two sheets come together. All right, and we're going to unwrap our beef tenderloin from the plastic wrap that we chilled it in and let it sit on the end of the puff pastry dough. Just gorgeous already. And now we're going to brush the egg wash up at the top and along the sides. So this is just one whisk egg that we're gonna brush on the edges and then we're also gonna brush it on top before we bake it. This will help it brown. This part of the egg wash is gonna help it all stick as you roll it up and seal in the edges. No need to do the bottom edge where we have the beef tenderloin. So just the sides and the end edge down there. So now we've got a nice coating of egg wash around the edges and we're gonna start to roll it up. After the Wellington is rolled up, we're going to wrap it in another piece of plastic wrap and we're gonna let it um, chill in the fridge for another 30 minutes. Tuck and crimp the edges of the puff pastry in on the edge so that all of the beef is completely sealed in by the puff pastry. All right, so a fork will help just keep them crimped and closed and keep all the good stuff in the puff pastry while it's baking. Now we're gonna get out a piece of plastic wrap and we're gonna wrap this baby up, let it chill, and then next step we'll be baking the beef wellington. Now you might need to use two pieces of plastic wrap for this, that's no problem. Let's go ahead and wrap one over this end and then one over the other end. Whoop. that in tightly and now we will transfer our beef wellington back into the fridge for 30 minutes um, to let it chill before we bake. So once our beef wellington has chilled in the refrigerator for 30 minutes we want to take it out of the plastic wrap and transfer it to a foil lined baking sheet. Now we're going to brush it liberally with egg wash. You wanna make sure you get it all covered because this is what gives it that delicious and beautiful golden brown crust on the outside. All right, now that the beef wellington is covered in the egg wash, we're going to score it with a paring knife. So this is both for venting out the steam as well as giving it a beautiful presentation. So I like to do diagonal in each direction, scores about eight to 10 in each direction. And this will just give it a lovely presentation at the end after it's baked. Perfect, and now we're going to finish off the beef wellington before baking it with a little flaky sea salt. This is both delicious and adds just a nice touch on top of the beef wellington. Beautiful little crystals of flaky sea salt finishes off this dish mm, just perfectly. Now we're going to place it in the oven and bake it for about 40 to 45 minutes until the internal temperature reaches 120 degrees for medium rare.
We now have our absolutely gorgeous beef wellington, beautifully brown crust on the outside, and we've pulled it out of the oven. I'm gonna transfer it over to a cutting board, and we're gonna let it rest for 10 minutes before we slice into it. So I recommend using two spatulas like this um, because it is a heavy uh, dish that is a little bit difficult to transport over to the cutting board. So using two spatulas, getting under the front and the back makes it a lot easier. So let's get this on here. Bam, beautiful. All right, we'll set a timer for 10 minutes and then we'll slice right into it. The time has come to slice into our beautiful beef wellington and I cannot wait. It already smells amazing. So we're gonna slice about one inch to one and a half inch sections and then we'll serve it. You can serve it however you'd like. I'm serving it with mashed potatoes. That's my favorite way to serve beef wellington. I am just so excited right now to see the result of all of our hard work put into this beautiful piece of meat. Gorgeous! Hello, gorgeous. Beef Wellington is the perfect recipe for the holiday season or any time you want to make an extra special meal for friends, family, loved ones. And this gorgeous beef tenderloin is just the perfect piece of meat to share. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Whitney Bond from WhitneyBond.com. You can grab this full recipe with all of the instructions and ingredients on WhitneyBond.com.